In the past couple of years here, the Chicago Bulls have really just went all in at the guard position, not only in drafting, but also in free agency and in trades. There's been a lot of acquisitions at that guard position, players going in, players going out, and this year, it kind of starts to make you beg the question, what are the Bulls doing at the guard position? And that's kind of what we're going to go over right now, is each player what the player individually brings to the team and kind of what the plan is for them. How are they going to even make this work as the Chicago Bulls organization? But if you enjoy this content, please like and subscribe. It really means a lot to me. I'm trying to reach 1,000 subscribers before the end of the year, and I cannot do that without your guys' help. But let's get right into this. The Chicago Bulls, what are they doing at the guard position? And should we just call it the Chicago Bulls guard scramble at this point with the amount of insane depth that they seem to have? And speaking of depth, I do have a full-length video on the Chicago Bulls bench and why I think they're one of the best benches in the league. And if you would like to check that video out, please go do. It's by far the best video on my entire channel. Not even just me personally saying that, but analytical-wise views and everything, likes, it's doing very well, so if you'd like to look more into Chicago Bulls information and check out more of my content, please check that out after you watch this video. But the Chicago Bulls guard scramble is uh, really, really a big mess right now. So the Chicago Bulls have just stockpiled guards these past few years. So first I want to go through kind of how the Bulls have got to this position based on how they brought the teams in, whether it was trade, draft, free agency, we're going to go through that, we're going to talk about each player and their stats, things of like that, and then we're going to talk about how this is even going to work, how are they going to make these each player get the minutes that they deserve, that they believe they're going to deserve, all that stuff, and just kind of how the rest of the rotation is going to look with all these guard dominant you know, roster that has been built. So first, let's start with the homegrown scenario drafting a player and you know we're only going to be looking at guys that are currently on the roster that we just like assume are going to be on the roster I'm not going to be looking at guys like Devin Dotson who I'm actually a huge fan of but he's not on the roster he's on the Windy City Bulls roster we're not going to look at those guys but we're going to be looking at you know each player that has been drafted or whatever that is on the current roster so like I said let's start with the drafting Kobe White in 2019, which by the way is only three years ago, which is uh, four years now, it's crazy that he is entering year five now, or I guess maybe year four. I'm not quite sure how numbers work. It seems like my brain's kind of dead today. But yeah, Kobe White in 2019 was pick number seven. And although that year's class was absolutely stacked and had guys like John ja Morant and Zion and guys that, you know, I really wanted instead. And if maybe the lottery pick falls in a different order, we end up with a guy like John Moran or something on the Bulls, but you don't. So you get Kobe White out of UNC, and I was a huge fan of this pick at the time, me being a UNC fan, let it be known if you guys didn't already know that. But at 22 years old now, Kobe White's entering his fourth year. I do have that written here. Good job on me notationing for myself. 22, 22, entering his fourth year, he was 19 when he got drafted. He has shown plenty of spurts on his potential, uh, truly, every single year. It seems like he's kind of flashed what he can be, including a couple couple months here and there in, in his rookie year as well as his sophomore year, even this past year, where he's averaging 20. I think at one point he even averaged 30 throughout like a two-week span. So he's shown flashes, but... He's kind of uh, kind of unsure what's going to be happening with him at this current moment. Last year, he had 13-3-3 three, and three for his stats. By the way, that means points, rebounds, and assists. If there's another number at the end, it means steals and blocks. I like combining those two numbers. I think it works better because it shows you the whole defense thing uh, as a whole. So if you hear me shuffle off numbers, the order is points, rebounds, assists, and then steals and blocks. So Kobe White had 13, 3, and 3, and had the most points off the bench of the entire team. He only started a couple games here and there. I think Io DeSumo kind of dominated when Zoe was missing time, as well as Caruso. But 13, 3, and 3 is honestly not bad. Truly, you'd like to see improvement on that assist number, and... You know, for Kobe White himself, he has definitely shown his ability to rebound. But 
Uh, you'd like to see his assists definitely pick up a little bit, especially at the point guard position when he showed capability of doing that at UNC. But the big thing surrounding Kobe White is there's reports of a potential trade happening. And honestly, I am a fan of Kobe White. I think that he can prosper in this league. I think he can be a very good player, maybe not uh, you know, all-star capable, but I think he can definitely be a very good starter on a different team. And that's the key here. There is potential trade talks. I think on this roster, Kobe White staying on this team, I am a fan of because, you know, crazy, crazy depth that this team already has, incredible bench. But I also see the potential that he has and what that also means for a potential trade. And I think that you get pretty decent amount back from a guy like Kobe White. So, you know, maybe he gets traded, maybe he doesn't, not quite sure. But Kobe White in 2019 was the Bulls pick. And then in 2021, as we just saw last year, the Bulls bring in Ayo Dusumu with the second round, pick 38. He is 22 years old, entering year two, so he was an older uh, piece when he was brought in, but he was an immediate, immediate impact for this team. You know, insiders are suggesting that Ayo Dusumu has taken a huge leap already just this offseason after already being a second team all rookie. So not only did he come into the league firing right away, and I mean, we saw that he was an integral piece to this team offensively, defensively, when people were healthy and when they weren't healthy. But I would assume with the fact that there's reports that he's getting even better just only means great things for this roster. And I know for sure I am a huge fan of Io, and I know the Bulls community is a massive fan as well. But last year he averaged 9 3 3 and 1.2. And, you know, just really, really good. And although, again, you'd like to see his assist numbers pick up similar to Kobe White, the fact is when you have so many guards like this team does have, you're bound to have a lower number of assists because somebody has to be moving the ball. And since only one player can get assists per possession, it's not hockey, you know, that takes away your ability to have a good number of assists on this roster. I mean, I think the closest guy other than Lonzo Ball with, uh, assists was I think like DeMar DeRozan or something with like five so your assist numbers especially on this roster aren't going to be incredibly high but on the defense side of things he was an integral piece to this roster whether it was closing out when the game got close or early on just dominating whoever the best you know one through three player was in another team he was always guarding whoever was best on the court in that position so really really important piece and I think he can only get better from this point on and hopefully you know we see like a Maybe we see an all-star come out of Io Dissuma. That would be great, but I think it might be difficult with what the rest of this roster looks like. Now, the most recent pick this year, the first-round pick, the only pick that the Bulls had, they pick up Dalen Terry in this draft, 2022, with the number 18th overall pick. And I will say, at first, I didn't know much about Dalen Terry, and I also thought that this pick was, you know, not the greatest, especially based on what was around there and who we, I was a fan of personally. There was other options, but... I do like Dalen Terry now that I've looked into him a lot. I think this guy's a glue guy. He's 20. He's still young. He's a glue guy. He can give you shooting. He can pass. He can rebound. He can get steals, all this stuff. And he started hot in Summer League, leading in statistics in, I think, like almost 70% of the stats outside of like rebounding. He was the leader in for the Bulls in the Summer League. And he averaged 8, 5, and 4 in college. And like I said, he did really good in Summer League, but I didn't want to use those numbers because the competition just isn't as good as or long enough to see like long-term numbers that are worthwhile. But he 8-5-4 in college on a team that honestly had plenty of scores already, so it's not like he needed to score, but he was always finding you know really good passing lanes and all that stuff. I have a full-length video on Dalen Terry. I think it's called like Dalen Terry, the future star of the Bulls. Uh, that video did really well, and I really enjoyed that video. I learned a lot about Dale and Terry making that video. Again, if you'd like to check out another one of my videos, that is a great one to check out after you watch that video. But Dale and Terry, 8, 5, and 4, yeah, another really good pick for the Bulls in this draft. But next up, we're going to be talking about trades, and this is where the biggest piece uh, for the Bulls have come from, for the most part, for the entire roster, with guys like DeMar DeRozan technically being a trade, Vooch was a trade, this team has been, you know, flourishing off of trades in recent years. But definitely in the guard position, too, they've done very well with trades. With first off, Zach Levine. Zach Levine, who was brought to this team, uh, I think now six six years ago, in that Jimmy Butler trade. 
is now 27 years old. He just signed a major deal with the Chicago Bulls and, you know, a huge, huge deal, a max contract over five years. I have a full video on this too. Uh, I'm just plugging videos every single where I see it. They'll probably be popping up in the corner. I don't even know if there's a max, but they'll be popping up in the corner. But he averaged 24, 5, and 5 last year. One of the best on scoring in the league at the guard position. One of the best guards and shooting guards in the entire league, in my opinion. And I don't think that's even like a biased take. And, you know, he was he was really, really good. And he was one of the players that we saw go in and out of the lineup due to injuries. But was always consistent when he was on the court. Whether it was his thumb hurt or his knee hurt. When he was playing, he was very consistent. 24, second in points for the team. 5-5. Five and five. Uh, Not sure where he landed on rebounds, but I know he was top 5 in assists. And his defense definitely improved quite a lot. So, uh, you know, big piece here. Like I said, I have a full video on him and Dale and Terry. So I didn't go super in-depth on either of those guys. But key, key pieces in where this Bulls organization is heading. And Zach Levine is going to be a starter on this shooting guard at shooting guard for this roster for forever unless he gets injured or someone completely explodes and by forever I mean at least the rest of his contract now next up we have Lonzo Ball who was just brought in last year and he's 24 years old I think he definitely has a lot of potential I mean a lot of potential especially you know if if you're a 2k fan NBA 2k it seems like he's the MVP in like every like third or fourth uh, new like career I make he's an MVP one year out of nowhere so you know I don't know if that means anything for you I think 2k is kind of whack sometimes but I just find that funny in a way but I definitely think that Lonzo has the potential to be an all-star when healthy because of his ability to pass and shoot incredibly well 24 years old but the only bad thing is unknown timeline for his injury so at first it was a knee injury and now it's a bruised bone which has kept guys out for entire years before. But it's it's mentioned that he's starting to come on the up and up. LeVar Ball is saying that he's doing well and I know some people might not like to listen to LeVar Ball, which is fair. Let's be honest, it's very fair. But the fact of the matter is it's the closest thing to a direct source that you're going to get for a guy like Lonzo Ball. So hopefully that means he returns at either right at the start of the regular season or you know, 10, 20 games in, that'd be really nice for his team. But when healthy, Lonzo Ball averaged 13, 5, 5, and 2.7, which I think was the most steal blocks combined for this roster outside of maybe Alex Russo. I can't remember, but I want to say it was him. Um, Yes, I I see down below. Yes, so Lonzo Ball had the highest steal block combination on the entire team. Very good shooter, 13 points is very, very good. One of the best percentage-wise three-point shooters on the roster, as well as five rebounds and five assists. And those assist numbers I expect to only inflate once he gets back healthy with this team. Things were only just starting to get rolling when he got injured. But I expect all those numbers to improve, and he's obviously, when healthy, the clear favorite at the point guard position. And next up, kind of the last bit here we have is free agency. Last bit of where people came in. So we have Alex Caruso, who is now 28, by the way. I know he's bald, and some people think that he's like 30-something. He's not. He's 28 years old, and he's really young, and, you know, maybe not really young, but he's still young. 28 is about where people are hitting their primes for the most part. I mean, Zach Levine just hit 27. He's definitely in his prime right now. But Alex Caruso, just like Dalen Terry, is definitely a glue guy, someone that you need on a team to be able to compete as well as just win games, even if you're not in comp- like real competition to win. And he doesn't really pop off the stat sheet, if we're being honest. He had 7, 4, 4, and 2.1. And although defensively, he definitely pops off the screen at you. 7, point, or, yeah, seven points, 4 rebounds, 4 assists. Nothing crazy, but when he has that ball in his hand, you never know what's going to happen. He can find a way to score himself. He can find the open man, whether it's... An oop, a bounce pass, whatever it might be. And on the defense side of things, he's one of the most dominant on this entire roster. So Alex Caruso is an integral piece to this team. Not much more than needs to be said about that. And the most recent recent acquisition, which I believe was just officially announced to have happened today, was Goran Dragic. And although the man is 36 years old, although one of the most iconic Derrick Rose dunks was on Goran Dragic, I think he is a good addition to this team. Now, he's a good shooter. He can play defense pretty well. 
But the thing that I find a little bit weird is that when he signed, he was told that he would get a solid amount of minutes, which he was told around like 20 based on reports, which I think is, you know, a lot, especially for this team that already has a ton of guard depth. Maybe you can move him, but he's, he's pretty short, so I don't know if you're going to move him very much. But he averaged 7, 3, 4, and 1.1, so pretty good numbers, especially for being a bench piece, pretty solid. I just worry about how many minutes he's going to be getting. So, you know, we've went through all of the players one by one. Now let's kind of look at how this is going to work for this team. So the team has seven guards on the roster who could be, you know, very important to this team. And honestly, outside of Zach Levine and Lonzo Ball, I think any one of these guys could be a solid six man on a different team. Kobe White could be, definitely could be. Crusoe could be. Io DeSumo was a great six man on this team last year. I don't know about Goran Dragic, but you know, pretty much all these guys could be a really, really good six man on most teams. And it just so happens that the Bulls have seven of those guys on this roster right now. Now, here's the thing with teams only having 13 roster spots officially outside of your two um, guys that are on, like, I don't know what it's called, like, they're there, but they're not officially there. It's like if someone gets played, they can get moved up. But you got 13 roster spots. And you got seven guards, which means over half of your roster is already filled with these guards if you're going to have all of them on your team, which looks like you're likely going to unless Kobe White randomly gets traded, which I don't know if he even can anymore with how close the season is coming. But that means that you would only allow like two players per position for the rest of the team. So, two at small forward, two at power forward, and two at center, there's six. Six plus seven is 13. And although two can be good enough, especially if those guys are healthy and they're able to play multiple different roles, which we're going to find out real soon that they can, it is a little bit worrisome that you're not going to have a little bit of extra depth because, you know, as we're going to kind of notice here, if, if we take a look at some other positions, Marco Simonovic definitely said his name wrong. Look very good in summer league and definitely looks to be deserving of at least some minutes on this team. And if you can only have two presi- two per position, it's going to be Vooch and it's going to be Andre Drummond that you just signed. So that means Marco's getting no minutes unless you move him a little bit. But I'm not sure if you would even move him. At small forward, you have DeMar, obviously, and you have Javante Green, who could either be small forward or power forward. I'm not quite sure. And then at power forward, you have P. Will, and then you have... Um, I always mix up the two if it who left Derek Jones Jr. or Troy Brown Jr. One of them is now in the Lakers. The other one's still on the Bulls. They're going to be that second spot at that power forward position. So that means Marco's not getting any minutes. That means he's not even on the roster unless you're taking out that back of power forward and put Marco there, which you could. But, you know, a little bit worrisome that only two per the other positions is going to happen because I think you could get a little bit more development at having more guys on the on the front court instead of the back court the whole time. Now the great thing about the Bulls current guard depth is the diversity of these players individually. So you know as mentioned if you only get two per the rest of the positions it's good to have diversity in those positions as well as positions here. And you know the Bulls at the guard position definitely already have that. Offensively Zach Lean was the number two scorer last year, while Lonzo Ball was an incredible at, you know, finding the open man as well as scoring on himself. Kobe White was the highest scorer off the bench, which is very, very good news. Um, and the top three-point shooter for the entire team, I think, outside of Patrick Williams. But Patrick Williams didn't play enough games to actually, like, count. And Io DeSumo and Alex Russo showed some great knack for passing the ball as well as finding the ability to score for themselves. Defensively, Alex Caruso and Lonzo Ball both had over two steal blocks per game, and they were both top 10 in steals per game. Io was also a pivotal piece in closing out games, as well as slowing down whoever the top scorer was on the other team in that you know backcourt. Yeah, backcourt's your guards, I believe, if, I, if I'm correct. And, you know, Dalen Terry looks like he could bring even more and, and run, you know, plenty of options here. So and, and play defense for you with a six seven wings or six seven height, and he has a very long wingspan. I think Dalen Terry is going to bring defense for you right away. Anyways, 
So you have diversity. They can play both positions. And with how the Bulls kind of want to shift their to a defense-heavy team, as mentioned by coaching as well as players, you know, the current guard depth, I think, adds a lot to that. Lonzo Ball, Alex Russo, Io DeSumo, Daylon Terry, four of your seven guys are really good defensively. Goran Dragic is pretty solid. He's not going to jump off the boards at you. So you got guys like Kobe White, who is questionable, and that's literally it at the guard position. And Zach Levine, who I think definitely improved defensively. So you have like only one or two guards that maybe are solid, if not very good, on the defense. And, you know, multi-level defense without losing any offensive potential on this team. Because even the guys that are really good defensively have a lot of great potential scoring-wise. So you can have this defense at, at the multiple levels as without losing the offense. That's only going to bring great things to your team. Now, you know, expect each of these guards to get solid a solid mix of minutes, alternating, depending on kind of what's going on now let it be known like when we're talking about diversity i think a lot of these guys at the guard position can play multiple positions i expect zach levine to stay at that two i expect lonzo's ball to stay at the one maybe play some two minutes here and there but for alex caruso alex caruso can play one two three even four i think with just how he plays we saw him start at the four a couple times i don't think it worked well but we did see it he can definitely play one through three dale and terry at six seven can definitely play one through four it'd be a small ball lineup but you could run it same with i would assume who could play one through three for sure kobe white can definitely play one or two ton of ton of diversity at that position and you can expect these guys to you know change up minutes a lot depending on what team you're playing if the other team is is slow, expect a ton of you know fast guys like Kobe White is really fast. I would assume Lonzo Ball, Zach Levine, expect that a lot. Or if you want to beef them up and and you got two big guys, you can do that and be fine because you have the defense presence off the bench. You know, expect a lot of minutes. If you need shooters, you have it. Goran Dragic, Kobe White, Lonzo Ball, Zach Levine. You have a great mix of everything at this guard position. An incredible mix. The only thing that you know may change in this position is if Kobe White ends up getting traded and what the Bulls do receive in return. I expect if the Bulls do a trade to move on from Kobe White, it would be in return for a pick or someone at the forward position. I don't think that they would bring in another guard for Kobe White. And honestly, if I'm being honest, if they do move on from Kobe White, I hope they don't bring back a player that's going to play. I hope that it's a pick. Hopefully you get a first-round pick out of it, which I think you can for what Kobe White's capable of, especially potential-wise. I hope you get a pick and maybe two picks and you get no players or one pick and a player that you know, you're know you banking on potential, and then you can move in a Marco. Or if Marco's already there and you have the junior on the bench, then maybe you take a risk on somebody coming in for Kobe White. But you know, for the most part, I think this team's pretty much set. And I think what they have done at the guard position is very good. And although there are seven of them, which can be worried based on the diversity and what positions they play and what minutes they can run, I'm not worried at all. At all. I really like what the Bulls have done with this roster, especially with the guard position. But what do you guys think? Do you think that there's too many guards? Do you think that the diversity is not going to affect the number of guys at a quote-unquote position because they can play multiple positions? What do you guys think? If you enjoyed this video, please give me a like. And if you want to see more like it, why not subscribe and try to reach 1,000 by the end of the year. And also go back and check out those videos that I mentioned before. The Dale and Terry video, the Zach Levine video that I just had, as well as, you know, the, the Bulls bench. All three of those videos did very well, and I think I did very well on the videos. So go check those out if you would like to see more of my content. And please subscribe. It means the world to me, and it would help me reach my goals. I just posted my 100th video which should be up either yesterday or the day before, depending on when this one goes out. As you can see, I'm recording them back to back. And wow, it feels incredible to have done 100 videos already. It's insane. I had 200 subs, and I'd, I'd love to... I think my goal is to break 300, maybe even 350 by the end of this current month. I think that would be incredible, but I can't do that without you guys. But as always, I hope it touched some today. I hope made you smile, hope made you laugh, that something's really important to me affects someone else's day in a great way, because every single day can be a great day if we all just put in the effort. And, as always, you guys all be safe out there. But
deep inside won't let